This is my 2006 Mercedes Sprinter, and today I'm going to show you how to do a transmission filter and fluid service on it, and also we're going to be cleaning out the conductor plate, see if there's any issues there that might possibly ca be causing shift issues. Um, so yeah, let's get right to it. So this is a Mercedes-Benz shop tool transmission dipstick. This is uh, the transmission dipstick that you have to buy in order to check your transmission fluid level on your T1N transmission. Uh, we'll put a link for where to buy this in the description, but you just come over here to where it says MB Workshop Only. Well, you just pull that right off. I uh, just want to point out these uh, bumps over here on the dipstick that I'm pointing to. Um, these should stop it from going any further than it's supposed to. Normally, you're going to want to have it running to check it, but we're just showing you that this is where it stops. I, can't, I can push it in a little more, but it's not really going anywhere after that. So one of the problems that we're out to fix on this fan in particular, go ahead and put the dipstick in. Remember where it stopped on the other van? Well, it's just going to keep going and going and going until it goes all the way in like the oil dipstick. It is not supposed to do this. Uh, and when we pull it out, we get a super incorrect fluid reading level. All right, so here we are laying underneath the van. We're looking right at the transmission pan right here. This is the drain plug for the transmission fluid. Uh, you definitely want to drain the transmission fluid before you even attempt to take this pan off. Um, but in some cases, if your drain plug is buggered up, not functioning properly, non-existent, whatever, you will unfortunately have to take the uh, whole entire transmission pan off. Fortunately for us, we've got a drain plug here, oil catching tool. Very important that you catch this stuff because we don't need to pollute the environment any worse than it already is. There we go, it should start coming. Ah, oh. there you go. Okay, so now that you've given it ample time to drain, you've just got a little bit of residual drip drip up here. Um, we're going to use a T27 socket to pull out the six bolts holding this pan in place. The reason we're pulling off this pan is so that we can change the transmission filter. And that's a pretty important part of changing the fluid. And pretty important part of transmission service in general. Loosen each of these a little bit first. Is this one of the cleanest transmission oil pans you've ever seen? I liked it. still got some fluid in the pan and we've still got plenty of it dripping out. Before we work on this we're going to want to let the rest of this drain out of course and let it be not so dripping wet. Um, but this is your transmission filter. In addition this entire underneath area is the valve body of your transmission. Just point out here this is where the upfront shifter links to the transmission and tells it what gear to be in. Okay so this filter it just pulls off. It's pretty gross. Right here is the tube that your transmission dipstick travels down, and then it pops out right here into the pan. That's how you check the fluid level on your transmission. And that's how the now, if you were just wanting to do a filter and fluid, you could stop here. You're ready to put your filter back in, reattach your bottom pan, and fill up your fluid. But here with this van, because it's been sitting for an extremely long time, we want to drop this down and take a look at the conductor plate and solenoids up above and make sure that everything's functioning properly before we take it on the road and push it. Probably should also drain the torque converter. Before we drop this, we want to actually pull this plug here, up here. This is your uh, TCM connector. You, you can see this is all gunked up. We're going to use a socket to pull the, the actual plug out because uh, this entire actual plug is a replaceable unit. Okay. 
now that we've used the level two persuasion tool to uh, pop the plug out a little bit see it just pulls right out there is an o-ring on this that your replacement will come with you can see the position of the o-ring like so and it just pulls off here you put the new one slides right back on and because this is a captive bolt, it doesn't fall out, so the new one will come with a new captive bolt in it already. So you can just put the plug in, screw it in. Okay, so now with the uh, computer plug removed, we're ready to actually begin unbolting the bolts that hold the valve body with which the conductor plate is attached to the top of it. <laughs> universe together right now. This one screw. And that's how you remove a valve body. So now we're going to drain the torque converter. This is kind of another important part if you want to make sure you've got all of your junky transmission fluid out like we do have now. Bell's in the front, he's going to turn over the engine. And I kind of already see it. So you don't have to go very far. This way? Yep. But there it's it. And I do need bigger allen key. So I've got it loosened up now and we're going to go ahead and keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning and here it comes. Oh that's gross. More cough syrup. Good old brake cleaner. Very important, you always put a magnet in the bottom of the transmission pan. This is the old one, this is the one that was in it. This is where the problem lies here. Uh, this is extremely improper for a sprinter. This is what we're looking for. See that goes in, it stops. This one, and this, it just kind of falls through. All right, so now we're all ready to put our cleaned valve body and conductor plate back in. Let's, uh, let's do it. torque wrench here we've got it set to eight newton meters eight newton meters is what you want to have it set to to uh, torque these valve body bolts and also the same torque you want to use for the um, pan when you're reinstalling it tighten it until I feel the click that's the click it's a pretty pretty noticeable click 
doesn't really let you get away with over torquing it. It's quite a nice, uh, you can see just by snugging up the bolts we were already pretty much there. So you don't want to over tighten these bolts in any way possible. Like that. Boom. That's a filter installed. Uh, before we put our transmission pan back on, very important, we always put a new transmission pan gasket on, which is um, probably the easiest part of this entire job, I'd say. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the pan. Make sure I've got this the right way. It's all six. Okay, so this plug it really only goes in one way. Um, so you've just got to feel around for it and feel feel when it just kind of goes in there and sits in properly. Feel it like right there for me. Note where the tab is. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, spin this in by hand. All right, that's tight, and I'm going to give it. Just to be sure. That thread with the plastic, so yeah. You just want to make sure that this lever is in the down position so that you unlock, and then as you turn it a little, it'll start to guide itself in. If you start to push it in, it'll actually start to turn this. And now, boom, like that. Boom, that plug's locked in, not going anywhere. We're ready to fill this baby back up with some fluid and take it for a test drive. So we're all set to start filling our transmission with transmission fluid. This is uh, imported direct from Germany, recommended for the Mercedes-Benz Sprinters. This is Mile ATF 3H transmission fluid. Um, so we drained about five quarts out. So we're gonna start with five quarts in and see how it reads. So to fill, you just take off this cap directly, the same place we checked the transmission fluid before. Right in there. Mm, this is fresh transmission fluid. And then we'll uh, start bottle feeding our baby sprinter. All right, so now that our filter's in, we're ready to start her up. Uh, we'll put her in park and then drive about two to three times to make sure the fluid cycles a little bit. And then we'll uh, double check our fluid and see if we need to top it off before we go for a test drive. Okay, so with the van running, we'll push our uh, dipstick in and it stops right there. That's proper, so that's been corrected.
So we're not radically overfilled. The engine is cold, so that's a logical place for us to start. I'm just gonna have to go for it. Hold my nose and uh, hope I don't get any in my mouth. That's what she said. <laughs>